Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hempar, and today I had it, um, well, I'm doing my weekly update, sorry, it's Liam's Leaping number 67, for the 16th of December, 2023. We're almost at the end of the year, which is crazy, uh, and I, I had a pretty good week. So first off, um, um, I read more this week than I have since my child was born, basically, or really since I started that job the week before my child was born. Um but uh, before I get into the books, I wanted to say I'll make a I'll make a separate video on this, but it'll probably be a couple weeks from now because I have an interview with Scott Odin coming out on the twentieth. Um, because his book, the the Doom of Odin, is coming out on the nineteenth. Another book that's coming out on the nineteenth, by the way, is the Rising Storm from the Weave in the Void by T. W. Anderson. That's also coming out on the nineteenth. Um, so th that's exciting. Those are two exciting releases. Um. Check those out if you haven't. Um, the Doom of Odin is being book three in a series, so you should check out The Gathering of Ravens or at least Twilight of the Gods beforehand. But anyways, what I wanted to mention, though, is that today I had a new short story come out. I've had three short stories, I believe, published. No, sold this year. Um, two of those have been published. Uh, I did have another story published. I guess it's kind of was sold, but I didn't actually make money off of that one. Um, and so this is my third story published this year which is nice. I have a tendency to write weird crap, seems like. Um, but it is free for you to read. So if you want to go and check out whetstonemag.blogspot.com or you just like a whetstone sword and sorcery or whetstone amateur sword and sorcery magazine, uh, this is the issue eight cover, which is I know terribly you can't see really because it's on my phone here. But this is Eurolant and Amrasserie from... Chase A. Falmar's Frolic on their Amaranthin, uh, which he um, he did this art and, you know, wrote that book, which is cool, you know, to have his art plus those characters on and on the cover uh, for where my story is. So my story is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, The Love of Words. It's kind of like my take on if a philologist was a sorcerer, kind of. Uh, so it's a little creepy. It's, in fact, most of the feedback leaned towards it being um, cosmic horror, maybe more than sword and sorcery. But uh, it's really short, hopefully. I Actually, what they said, here's what I want. If I were to be completely honest, um, I like it when people read my stuff. Um, it'd be even cooler is if you read it, let me know what you think. But leave a review. I mean, I don't think Whetstone issue eight, uh, since they're free, they're not sold anywhere, so they're not on Amazon. But you can review them on Goodreads, so I'm not sure issue eight is, I doubt it's up. But even this this counts for something like Half Human Heroes as well. I know I've had some um, friends or whatever read my story in Half Human Heroes, um, but there's very few reviews up for Half Human Heroes. So if you wanted to review that, uh, that'd be helpful, I feel like. Um, but anyways, so again, the love of words out in Whetstone issue eight, uh, and again, there's a there's a preface uh, that the the editor gives the main editor Jason Ray Carney um, for each story, and part of the preface here says an artful meditation on the relationship between fantasy, escapism, reading, and language, a legitimate literary sword and sorcery experiment, which makes me very happy. Uh, I use a lot of archaic words in this, so excuse those. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised they published it. You know, accepted it for publication and published it with those archaic words, because um, there's a lot. Normally, they're okay with a couple, not as many as I use, but um, I'm happy with it. Um, so, anyways, that is the the most exciting thing this week. Though uh, I've I read one short story, "The Night Time or a Sneeze" by Ed Greenwood, um, which is a Forgotten Realms spinny yarn, which are these stories that he he gets prompts from a, an audience and then he combines those crazy prompts and makes a story. Ed Greenwood's really good at crazy stories, so it works. Um, this one is about Timora sneezing. Timora is the goddess of luck. Um, and there's other things. Of course, I go on in the story. It's pretty wild. And it's pretty long, too. In fact, it's probably not a short story. It's probably like a novel light or a novella. Um, anyways, uh, I did read more of The Magician's Nephew with my girls, my daughters. Um, I don't have that book with me because it's in their room right now. I did finish five books. Uh, again, I kind of re-looked at The Rising Storm. I read it twice already, but there's never a cover I had to put up in my um, thing. But even then, I, I, I finished too much. So I finally finished EverQuest Rogue's Hour. You can hear my baby crying in the background. It's okay. Mom is with him. Um, this is fun. 
Uh, probably my least favorite thing I've read by Scott Stevenson, but I've only read a few things by him. Um, uh, it's interesting. If you like EverQuest, you'll probably like this. Um, it's interesting to see where that EverQuest novel line could have gone and where it didn't go. It only has four publications, I think. Um, but I'm interested to talk more about it when I finally do a review probably several months from now. I like EverQuest as a game. It'll be cool to do a review with the EverQuest logo probably in that thumbnail. Um, I also finished The Twilight of the Gods by Scott Odin, which again, book two in the Grimnir Saga. Book three comes out Tuesday. I've been reading it. That's another book I'm reading. I'm not very far into it yet, though. Um, but Twilight of the Gods was very good. Um, if you like historical fantasy or even historical fiction, and particularly Viking stuff, you should check this out. If you like Robert E. Howard and haven't read Scott Odin, he, to me, um, evokes Robert E. Howard's writing more than any other writer. Um, so you'd want to check him out as well. Um, yeah, Scott Odin, he's really good. Um Another book I finished besides Twilight Gods and Rogue's Hour was Lud in the Mist, which I don't have a physical copy. This is by Hope Mirlis. Mirlis? I'm not sure how to say her name, but the book is from 1926. It's an example of high fantasy, so set in a secondary world. Um, it's pretty whimsical. It's about art, and uh, it's a little silly, of course, at times. Um, not my favorite early fantasy, especially if we're talking early 20th century fantasy, uh, but it was worthwhile. It's not very long. It's standalone. Um, and I will have more thoughts on that again, probably in a few months. Uh, I am doing my 12 days of Christmas thing here. I've have all the reviews for that recorded now, 12 days starting with the first day of Christmas, which is Christmas for those unaware. Um, but yeah. And then the other novel I finished was chaos bound, which again, I don't have a physical copy. I didn't have a physical copy for the world wing horror either, but this is book eight in David Farland's the rune Lords. It's the last book in the series. Well, it's definitely a place you could end. It doesn't feel as much of an Indian like the Lair of Bones does. And that's probably where this book nine that didn't happen was supposed to come in. That was supposedly finished like, or almost finished like 10 years ago. And then David Farland passed away last year. So uh, it is supposedly supposed to be finished by Carrie English. Um, I haven't read anything by her. I have seen her. I wouldn't exactly say I've met her because I've never spoken with her. But um, we'll see if that happens. That'd be interesting uh, to see. How that happens if that does because i haven't heard anything besides like a one sentence thing in a kickstarter or there's no like announcement anywhere um the only other thing i finished this week was um king horn which is super exciting okay so i i put a list of classics this year i wanted to read this included a lot of medieval things this included like romantic pieces and early modern pieces as well but um the medieval ones are the ones i was really excited about and i did read stuff like uh Lamort D'Arthur and um, Pierce Plowman. And I reviewed Pierce Plowman. I don't review a lot of the classics I read, though. I don't review most of them. And uh, um, King Horn is, I believe, the earliest romance written in Middle English. And uh, it's not Arthurian. Uh, it, it has some pretty cool stuff in it, actually. It has, like, it mentions Western Ness. It's where Tolkien got the words. I'll probably make a video on this because like, I liked King Horn a lot. Um, but one thing I really like about it, and there's, there's three stories in particular this year, um, Sir Gowan and the Carl of Carlisle, King Horn, and, uh, the Green Knight, not Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, a later Green Knight, and it uses a different type of verse, um, that, uh, I read in Middle English, and that is it's super exciting to me. I mean, like, it, it's hard for me to read, for example, uh, the certain dialects of Middle English, uh, like this one that Sir Gowan and the Green Knight is written in, that is, it's rather difficult. I, I understand a lot less of it, but I'm trying to work on my old and Middle English, and I, it's really fun when you're able to just read, and then the understanding comes. Like I, I love, you know, um, there's an allegory, actually, in one of the books, um, I uh, am reading, which I, I'm loving the books I'm reading right now, by the way, um. I think do do do. Oh, I should have marked it better because I thought it was at let's see. Maybe this is it. 
Oh, maybe that's not it. <laughs> Anyways, there is something about <coughs> excuse me, um, gaining wood <laughs> from a tree. Oh, this is it. Oh, yeah, it says, I advise everyone who is able and has many wagons to make his way to that same wood where I cut these posts and gather more for himself and load up his wagons with fine timbers so that he may weave many elegant walls and establish many a noble house, build a fine homestead, and there dwell in happiness and peace both summer and winter. Um, this is from the earlier, in every tree I saw something I needed at home. Um, so he recommends every reader go to the woods, which is the forest of books. So basically read. And to me, this in, in large part, this includes reading the things as they were written, which is one of the reasons I like philology. Um, cause that's what it encouraged. You get a lot more when you're reading it in the way that it was written. Um, and not the way it, you know, it's trans. I can already tell this video is going to be longer than I want it to be, but, um, yeah. So this book, sorry, that, that Kinghorn leads into this, I guess, Winters in the World by Eleanor Parker. Uh, Eleanor Parker is someone I like following on Twitter. She tweets interesting stuff. Her blog, uh, A Clerk of Oxford is very, very intriguing um and so uh yeah this is a fun poetic stuff it's very much reminds me of what i love about you know uh particularly anglo-saxon poetry in this case right because it's a, a journey through the anglo-saxon year um right uh thus over the this passed away so can this right so it's consolation right that's from the poem deor um right about your trials right and how if this terrible thing or this hard thing pass so can this thing you're going through right now um i thought it'd be very fun to start reading in the winter uh it does go over all the seasons but it starts with the winter um and it's cool because you know you have things like christ in anglo-saxon poetry is personified as like this warrior right um very germanic um and uh in, you see that with a lot of biblical imagery but as well as winter winter is described as like a cedar almost he builds winter builds bridges you know um right because it's ice right but uh it's very 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 interesting i like it and tom shippy recommends it too by the way on the back here it says a heart warmer for the coming winter we could do worse than choose miss barker's books for a wintry companion again very good um if you're into that type of stuff uh i won't mention sir gowan right now again because uh, i'm running out of time but another book i was actually reading this last week but i i was so very little into it. Lee Brackett had her birthday last week, um, and she wrote Empire Strikes Back, for those unaware, um, or at least the original version of it. Um, but she's big for her uh, sword and planet uh, type of sci-fi or fantasy. Who cares, right? Um, but uh, really good stuff. I'm really enjoying the sort of Rionin. This is the first book I ever got by her, uh, but I read something else uh, early this year by her, Black Amazon of Mars, which I ended up really enjoying. I'm really enjoying the sort of Rionin right now. Just some interesting names with Arthurian names, or interesting things with Arthurian names, um, but it's very good. Um, I will say more on that when I finish it. I'm also about halfway into Into the Labyrinth by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, which is book six of seven of the Death Gate Cycle, so I'm almost done. Once I finish this, I would like to finish this series just like I finished Rune Lords. Um, book eight, or book seven is rather short, so I thought, oh, I'll give this one a go, and... Um, it's not bad. Uh, not my favorite, but not bad. Um, I think I mentioned, I did a, read one story in a cult detective magazine, number 10. Um, and yeah, I mentioned the doom of Odin already, which I'm very much enjoying. It's funny because Grimnir, whose main character starts out dead. That's not a spoiler. He just starts dead. It's the first like sentence, essentially. Um, another book I'm really enjoying and is beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful book if anyone's still here i highly recommend if you haven't read this um by masuji ibuse um black rain um which came out in 65 i think translated in english in 66 so it's translated here by uh i know someone bester um john bester uh this is a very sublime piece of art uh sublime as in the romantics uh right uh and uh yeah, I have more words for it next week, but this video is already too long. And uh, but yeah, I'm loving Black Rain. It is a novel, <clears throat> technically, but it's it's nauseating at times and it's awe-inspiring at other times. Um, 
but for those unaware, it is about um, these characters in and around uh, the fallout of the <laughs> nuclear bombing of Hiroshima. So, anyways, um, yeah, good stuff, good reading. So, let me know what you've been up to. Uh, I'm insanely busy, but I'm I'm good. I get good reading in. So, sorry if I don't participate. Uh, in booktube stuff as much as I would like to, but I'm hoping to have some buddy reads here, at least with T, um, soon. Some Arthurian stuff. I we'll see, uh, and we'll invite people. I'm sure if, if we get that like solid, I guess. So, anyways, Liam from Liam's Lyceum. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>